CataractCoach.com, Cataract Surgery, and 8-Cut Radial Keratotomy. Here's a step-by-step guide for these challenging cases. This is my fourth cataract in an RK patient this morning. So I do hundreds of these patients per year, and I know most ophthalmologists only do one a year. So I have an unusual experience in that regard, of thousands of these patients done. So you see this patient has very clean eight-cut RK that was done many, many years ago. This patient also had LASIK done. So notice how the paresthesia is made between the two RK cuts there on the left-hand side. And now the eye is filled with viscoelastic. Now here we're using a diamond keratome, 2.2 millimeters, and make the tunnel length a little shorter. Enter in a little bit before short tunnel length. Why? You do not want to intersect the RK cut. So squeezing that incision in between the two existing RK incisions, do not intersect them. Do not touch them. Now, at this point, you're getting a 5 millimeter rexus done. Let's talk a little about the lens calcs. The lens calcs in these eyes, you can be thrown off. Remember, RK changes both the anterior curvature of the cornea and the posterior curvature of the cornea. That's different than LASIK or PRK. Those things only change the anterior curvature of the cornea. But in RK, you change both. And you have to take that into account in these lens calculations. Now, in these calculations, when you measure the cornea, the machines are going to measure the cornea is stronger than it is. So the machine may say the cornea has a power of 35, but maybe the power is only 33. And if you use that power of 35 for your calculations, the patient ends up hyperopic. So you need to use the appropriate number here, and you need to figure out how to calculate this. And I have a lot of explanations on cataractcoach.com. Yes, you have to leave YouTube to check that out in order to figure out how to do the lens calcs. There's the nucleus. You can see it's got a pretty good nuclear density here. Put the phaco probe in, chop it behind Boom, two halves created, and we'll just sub-chop this cataract. There's about a quarter that got chopped off. Emulsify that down. Now, as we do this, you want to be very gentle. You don't want to use a very high infusion pressure. You don't want to split open the arcane incisions. Those arcane incisions are about 90% depth. They really are that deep. So think of a cornea as 500 microns, 90% depth means 450 microns. That means the uncut cornea is 50 microns, or about half the thickness of a strand of hair. So you got to be very gentle on these eyes. So now cutting up the cataract or chopping into small pieces, you can emulsify those pretty easily here. Remember, these eyes may behave like big myopic eyes because this patient used to be myopic before having the LASIK done and, of course, the RK done. So taking these pieces down, in this situation, we're going to implant a lens that's a monofocal lens, and we're aiming for a distance goal, so planar or emetropic a refractive outcome here. Here comes the end, taking out that last bit of lens material, the lens nucleus, epinuclear shell, and that looks pretty clean here. Now we can go inside and we can do the cortex removal. So calculations here are important. Where you place the incisions are important. How you set your parameters. So think about it. What would you do differently in your parameters here? Maybe lower the infusion rate so you're not such a high infusion. You don't want to pressurize the eye so much, so lower the intraocular pressure. You may also therefore want to decrease your aspiration flow rate in order to keep more stable chamber fluidics inside this eye. So nice and easy on that. When you make these incisions, again, a diamond keratome is my preferred. You can use a steel blade or something else, but again, I prefer a diamond. Cleaning up the capsule bag pretty nicely here, but be cautious here. Be very, very cautious. In some of these RK patients, we do use a monofocal toric lens, and they can do very well with a toric lens as well. And just to make sure that their astigmatism is, is symmetric and stable. And then those patients can do very well. And regular astigmatism, not irregular. So you can see here, we'll polish the capsule bag a little bit. There's a little bit of sub-incisional lens material there. We'll get as much as we can here. You want to be gentle here. The balance here, of course, is just to be gentle. First, do no harm. And it'll clean up pretty nicely. There you go. That's pretty good. And again, I wouldn't sp- spend too much time worrying about any sub-incisional material. That's very minimal, if any. Here comes the lens. And again, be cautious as you insert this. You don't want to put pressure on the existing RK incisions. So as we insert this lens, look how the eye is underinflated. Nice and gentle to get that lens in. You don't want to have a highly pressurized eye. You don't want to put stress on those existing RK incisions. Here's the lens getting it in the capsule bag, nicely centered. You can see it's a good rexus. That rexus is just about perfect, a 5-millimeter rexus. 
and I'll try to clean up again, a little more polish on the caps or bag here with this the lens loop, or in this case, we're using the spatula, and that cleans up pretty nicely. Let's try go in to remove our viscoelastic, and this patient will do very well. Remember, too, in the post-op period, RK incisions swell. So look at the K value in the post-op period. If this patient is plus one or 150 tomorrow, I'll be happy. Why? Because the cornea is going to be about a diopter, a diopter and a half flatter than it was in the pre-op. That's because the RK incision swell. At the end here, make sure you hydrate just the roof. Do not hydrate towards the sides. You will rip open the RK incisions, just the roof there. And again, when this patient's post-op period, a week or two later, when the Ks go back to the pre-op value, then you can assess the refractive outcome. And in this case, it'll be pretty close to amatropia. And it'll be a very, very happy patient. Alrighty now, thanks for watching. I want to invite you to submit a video. We have a resident surgical video competition coming up with cash prizes. In fact, I will be writing the check for the grand prize winner. You're going to submit a three-minute edited surgical procedure video with your voiceover using these links that are provided here. Now, you can see them on your screen, but if you want the clickable links, you're going to have to leave YouTube. Yes. Go to cataractcoach.com, the website. Click on today's video, and then you'll have a hot link to all the directions of how to submit your video. It's coming up soon. It's going to be in June, on the 15th of June. Please, you want to enter this contest. Yes, you can win. Look also on cataractcoach.com. Search for the keyword contest, and you can see the winner's from the last couple times to give yourself an idea. Any video can win. Check it out.